Music, music, music. What can we do without music, right? Well, let's discuss music, but putting great emphasis on artists as well as performances. How should an artist prepare for a performance? What should happen before the performance? What should happen at the performance? If you're an artist or an artist manager as well as a performer or music organizer, you already know that we cannot escape from some of these topics that they need to be discussed. Now, before we go deep with this video, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Pastor Diaz LA. Most of you on social media know me as Watchman DSLA. Well, however you know me, that does not really matter much. Uh, my goal here today is to discuss music, to discuss what it means to be an artist, to discuss how to perform, to discuss how to prepare for a performance, to discuss who should you perform to, to discuss basically how you should conduct yourself and so on. What I'm going to discuss here today is not hearsay, but based on experience, experience coming from a former artist, experience coming from a former producer, experience coming from a former performer as well. I've been in the music industry for a few years and in those few years I learned quite a lot about production, about performance, about conduct on stage and many other aspects of music. So today I am here to share my little knowledge that I learned in my years of doing music. Now we'll be discussing around about four points, four points that I have here here on my laptop right here point number one that we're gonna be dealing with is purpose of participation point number two is preparation for the performance and point number three the performance itself and last but not least that's point number four and point number four is who's being glorified through your performance is it you or is it god I guess you understand what I'm trying to convey here. Okay, let's begin with number one. Now, a lot of times when we are invited for performances, many of us, because we have sang in churches, because we have sang in church crusades, because we have sang in church conferences, because we have sang in outreaches, because we have sang in the choir, we just basically get to decide that we are okay. We can attend such an event and be able to deliver without any problem at all. But I think that when we do that, that's a very big mistake. But to begin with, that's not even something that we should concern ourselves with. To begin with, you need to consider first when you are invited to go and perform. You need to consider your purpose of participation and that's our point number one. The reason why you are accepting this invitation. Why are you going there? Let's say you stay in Okahanja or you stay in Winduk and you are being invited to go and perform in Valfes Bay, in Swakopmund or Hentis Bay. The question is, why are you accepting this invitation? What's your purpose of participating in this event? What's motivating you to go and perform, to attend and perform? Is it the money? Is it self-glory? Is it for fame? Is it to impress friends and family? Is it for girls? Or is it for men for that matter? All of those points matter. That's why I'm mentioning all of them. Beginning with self-glory. Meaning to say, are you going there just to show yourself, to go show people that you can sing and you can sing beautifully? Or are you going there to present yourself to people that you are also a part of this huge event? If it's a huge event, do you just want for the world to get to know that that person also is some sort of important person or important artist for that matter because they shared a stage for example with Jericho or they shared a stage with Beyonce or they shared a stage with Spirit of Praise and so on. And point number two, point number two is for praise praises from family and friends. Are you accepting this invitation so you can receive praises from family and friends? Now this point relates back to point number one that I already mentioned, which is self-glory. Are you attending? Are you going to perform? Are you accepting this invitation so friends and family can praise you and say, wow, that's my friend performing there. So they can be proud of you and so forth. Or why are you accepting this performance? Why are you attending this event for that matter? And another important point or reason why we see many artists accepting invitations and attending events to perform is because because they are having the spirit of lust. Most of them 
attend because they want to meet new girls. New girls that they can sleep with to satisfy their lust. New men that they can sleep with to satisfy their lust. Though some are going there for that same purpose, but they claim that they are going there hoping that they're gonna meet the girl of their dreams or the man of their dreams, someone that they might marry or someone that might marry them and so on. Now that also is a wrong motive to attend an event or to accept an invitation to go perform and so on. But point number four or number D, letter D for that matter, is money. Are you accepting this invitation because of money? Is money your motivation? Are you going to perform because you have been offered a certain amount of money? Or are you going to perform for the glory of God? Because reason for attending an event matters. And self-analysis for that matter. This is what I should have called this point. Self-analysis. Have you analyzed yourself? Have you questioned yourself? Have you checked yourself to see the reason why you want to attend this event? The reason why you want to be a part of this event? Or are you just going to stand up and go ignoring all of these facts? It's very important that we actually conduct ourselves and think and reason with wisdom. Because we are not of this world. Those of this world stand up for all wrong motives, knowing that they are going there for wrong motives, but they still go anyway. But we as believers need to check our ourselves, to analyze ourselves time to time again, to make sure that when we attend any event, we are attending this event with the right motives and so on. There are times that I'm invited for outreaches. There are times that I'm invited for crusades. There are times that I'm invited for conferences. There are times that I'm invited for church services. But then what I do before attending any conference, any crusade, any event for that matter, I try to check myself. I ask myself, I sit down and say, okay, I need to go. But what's my purpose of going there? What am I trying to achieve with my going? Am I going to glorify the Lord? Am I going to honor the Lord? Or am I just going there to go show that I can teach, to go show that I can preach, to go show that I can worship and so on. So motive matters a lot. Now talking about money, for a believer money should never be a priority when it comes to performances or attending events. Now of course there are times that you will have needs, especially if you are being invited in another region and you do not have accommodation, you do not have food, you do not have family there that can cater for you. Sometimes you might ask basically to be paid or you might ask for the church or whatever organization that is inviting you to basically accommodate you and so on. Now that can be arranged and that's acceptable. But just make sure that it's really about that because you are in need of transportation money or because you are in need of accommodation money or because you are in need of food money or because you are just in need of some pocket money. It must not become a habit to a point where it seems as though you are charging for the gospel while the gospel is said to be free. Now whether you are preaching it, it should be free. Whether you are performing signs and wonders, it should be free. Whether you are healing, it should be free. Free. Whether you are prophesying, it should be free. Whether you are casting out demons, it should be free. Whether you are performing, singing to the Lord, praising, worshiping, it does not change. The gospel overall should be free. But anytime that money is involved, one should really check themselves to check whether for you the gospel has become a means for survival or a means for gain for that matter and so on. But okay, let's continue on. I would like to give you a little glimpse of why we must come together to worship because that's very important before we move over to point number two. So the question here should be what's the purpose of praise and worship? Or what's the purpose of these different people? These different worshipers? These different psalmists? These different ministers coming together in one building? Let me read from my laptop what I already wrote. I wrote saying, praise and worship are an opportunity to speak from your heart to the heart of God. Now that's very important to understand. Praise and worship is an opportunity to speak from your heart to the heart of God. So there should be a dialogue just like prayer. You get an opportunity to speak from your heart, to cry from your heart, from your heart to the heart of God. So through praise, through worship and so on, we are really communicating to God, whether we are giving him glory, whether we are praising him, whether we are blessing him, whatever the means is, but this is communication between us and God because we are created to worship and praise our Lord and God. Now, 
I wrote further saying, when you praise on worship, what you are really doing is you are speaking, singing, declaring, and proclaiming who God is and his power as well as who you are as his child. It reflects a connection, an intimate space between you and him. Now that's very important. When you are praising and worshiping, what you are really doing is that you are declaring or you are proclaiming or you are speaking or singing to God about what you feel inside. So in other words, if you're a songwriter or if you're a recording artist, you need to make sure that the song that you are writing down, that it's not glorify you, it's not about you, but rather it glorifies God. Now, even if you are telling a story that has to do with your life, but yet towards the end or within that song, God should be glorified. The focus should be God. The goal should be God's name being uplifted up on high. God being praised and God being worshipped and so on. Because this is communication, a heart-to-heart -heart communication between you and God or from you to God for that matter. I hope that this was much clear in this point. Okay, now moving on, point number two. Point number two, we are talking about preparation for performance. Preparation for performance is very important. Now, many artists or many performers neglect this area right here. They fail to prepare for a performance. But you get to realize that this lack of preparation, it's exactly what sabotages their performance. It's exactly what makes their performance look as though they are beginners, even though they have performed and they have shared the stage with other great performers within the country or all around uh, the world and so on or the continent. You get to realize that their performance basically does not really stand out. But rather those that have never performed before because of pressure, because of stress, because of the fear of failing to deliver. They attend rehearsals and in so doing as they attend rehearsals, they get to be well prepared for the performances ahead. Preparation for performance meaning to say, which song or songs are you going to sing? Have you already in mind which songs you are going to sing? Whether you are going to be given an opportunity to sing one song or two songs, do you already have that song in mind? Do you already know whether they require you to perform a slow song or a fast song, a high tempo song for that matter? Have you prepared for it already? Because preparation is very important in that regard. You cannot come to the show, to the event, and on that day you are struggling to pick which song to go with and so on. And then also another point within this preparation for performance is, is there anything that instrumentalists should be aware of? Is there anything that the people that are going to pay the instruments should be aware of? This is the reason why rehearsals are organized. You need to show up for rehearsals. Now, hinting back to the gospel show that we recently organized, which I helped to organize and attended also, which was well received by the people and it went very well for that matter. It was a success. You get to realize that during the time of preparation, many people did not show up. Many performers did not show up. And many that showed up during the early days, eventually as days went by, maybe after two days or so, they began began to basically stay home and not show up for the rehearsals anymore, for the auditions anymore. And this unfortunately did not play out so well for most of them when it came for time to deliver during the day of the event. Now the reason why I am a cameraman, the reason why I choose to be the cameraman when it comes to events like this is that it helps me, it gives me the ability to see where many people do not see. All I have to do is set up my camera camera to face the stage or wherever it needs to face the area that I need to capture. And then from there, I have my natural physical eyes to see where I want to look on another direction, another angle. And then I have my spiritual eyes also set in seeing mode for that matter and looking mode. So as a cameraman, I get the opportunity to see with six eyes, six eyes more than anyone else because I have my camera 
here which is a set of eyes and then i have my physical eyes and then from there i have my spiritual eyes for that matter so i get to be in the best position to be able to observe and be able to see more than many within this building would be able to see and i stand in better position to be able to assist when necessary and of course let us not forget that i mentioned earlier that i am a music producer as well as a former artist so of course i have a little bit of an idea on how to perform or how to record or on how to help somebody that needs the help on how to perform music for that matter so we mentioned already the songs that you're going to perform have you prepared them already and then also is there anything that instrumentalists should be aware of about your performance and then considering also instrumentalist as you are rehearsing you also need to consider the intros the outros of the song the verses of the song uh, right tune right key right drums right melody right tempo the list goes on and on now there is no any other place where this can be done where this can be perfected if it's not during the time of rehearsals and auditions for that matter this is why i encourage everyone everybody every artist every performer every event organizer that you have rehearsals every time you organize an event so that the artists that are going to be performing if they are from the same region they may come together at least for three days or for a week so that they can be able especially if this is a live event to sing a little bit with the artists to see whether they're going to be able to get along and make changes where changes need to be made because some people like starting off with the intro before they pick up is it the first song at what tempo all of that matters at what tone you know at what melody at what note for that matter when it comes to the instrumentalist all of that matter all of that needs to be considered this is why people must learn to attend rehearsals people must learn to attend auditions because this helps very much in your delivery when it's time for you to deliver or when it's time for you to perform we have to know that preparation even with war is very important and this is biblical we have to understand that a man that goes to war without preparation that man is preparing for a loss now i say going to war because reality is that worship and praise is really waging a war against the powers of satan against the kingdom of satan against every power of darkness that be we think that maybe we are just singing well it depends are you just singing for self-glory are you singing for money are you singing to impress or are you singing to the glory of god because those who sing to the glory of god as they are singing they are waging war against the powers principalities and every authority that stands against the kingdom of god every power of darkness and every demonic spirit that exists so such person needs to prepare well because if you prepare wrongly you're gonna be overcome by the powers of darkness that be Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil so it's very important that you put on the whole armor how do you put on the whole armor musically you prepare you make sure that you rehearse you make sure that you audition you make sure that the day of your performance you have already overcome every circumstance that could be standing in your way whether it's crowd pressure whether it's the shame of having your friends watch you or your family watching you whether it's nervousness whether it's the lack of boldness you need to make sure that you have already overcome all of that during the auditions so that on the day of performance you would not fail for that matter but hinting back to what i mentioned earlier when i say that when you are performing you are waging war against the kingdom of satan thus you need to prepare and prepare properly i don't like saying things without providing scriptures so i'm going to be providing you scriptures where this was seen where results were seen when men of god were basically put in positions whereby they wouldn't have come out of them and yet just by praising and worshiping by praying and singing psalms things happen that one never could have imagined so we are looking at the book of acts acts chapter 16 verse 25 to 26 verse 25 says and at midnight 
Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. So these two were in prison. Paul and Silas were in prison. But while they were in prison, they prayed to God. But most importantly, not only did they pray to God, they also sang praises unto God. And listen to what the scripture says further. And the prisoners heard them. And verse 26 says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So this is exactly what I was referring to. That when praises go up, blessings begin to come down. The glory of God begin to fall down. So in other words, during our praise and worship, whether it's a gospel show, whether it's a conference, whether it's just a regular church service, we need to make sure that we are singing to the glory of God. We are singing for from our hearts to the heart of God. We need to touch the heart of God. And once we touch the heart of God, God will begin fighting for us. The Bible says that their bands began to be loosed and prison doors began to open. Now picture this in a spiritual sense. Whether you are in bandage, whether you are going through difficulties, whether mountains are in your way, whether you are going through a very huge storm. The way out, ladies and gentlemen, out of all of these storms, out of all of these mountains, out of all of that wildness, out of all of that smoke, out of all of that fire, is to pray and to sing praises unto God. And God, being touched in the heart, will be able to answer. He will be able to fight off the enemy for us and give us the victory that we are looking for. This is the reason why many people say when praises go up, the glory of God comes down. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's move on. Point number three, the most important one, the performance. The performance is very important. If you really rehearsed or trained or auditioned, the performance is what you rehearsed for. It's what you auditioned for. It's what you trained for. And now this means that it's now time to deliver. And this will be revealed in your performance. But here are a few pointers to consider when going to perform for that matter. Point number one. We need to understand that according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40, it says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Hallelujah. Let all things be done decently and in order. You are coming to perform is true. But our way of performing as believers is not the same as the way of the world. The world comes with jeans torn. The world comes with makeup as though they are actually going to the club. The world comes drunk and smoked, drugged up and so on. But we as believers, we come in an orderly manner. We are not coming to compete. We are not coming to show, you know, anybody that we are better than anybody else. We are not coming to challenge anybody else, but we are coming to praise and glorify and bless the Lord. So three points to consider in this regard. Do not come drunk or drugged up. That's very important. You are coming to praise the Lord. You are coming to glorify the Lord. You are coming not to entertain as the world does, but you are coming to make sure that the name of the Lord is lifted up on high. So make sure that you are sober-minded. Make sure that the Spirit can be able to fill you up once you are there. The Spirit can be able to move through you in order to give God glory, in order to basically not stumble up while you are performing, in order not to sing all the wrong notes while you are performing. So you make sure that you are not drunk or drugged up. This is how you also protect your own reputation and the reputation of the kingdom of God. Because you need to remember that you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. An ambassador of God. And for that reason, you need to make sure that you conduct yourself as one who has order in their life. And point number B, do not come dressed up as though you are going to perform at the club. It's very important. Dressing code needs to be considered when we come together. Don't dress up as though you are going to look for a boyfriend. Ladies, sisters, don't dress up as though you are going to look for a man. If a man truly is going to find you, 
It doesn't matter how you dress up, even if you were dressed up as your granny. Because of your good conduct, that man is going to set his eyes and his heart on you. So you do not need to dress up in a provocative manner. With jeans torn, with a short mini skirt, with a tight trouser, with a tight dress, with a tight mini skirt that brings no glory to God, but rather causes weak brothers that are already suffering from lust, stumble and fall for that matter. And of course, the brothers are no exception as well. Brothers also, this applies to you as well. If you are coming, make sure that you are coming to give glory to God as well. Do not dress up as these false prophets that are dressing up their suits that are so tight that their private parts here in front, they are standing up. They can be seen and so on. This does not glorify the Lord at all. Make sure that whatever trouser you are putting on, if you are putting on a trouser or you are putting on a suit, you are putting on a jeans trouser, doesn't matter what kind of clothing you are putting on as long as you are not putting on a dress as well because the lord obviously says let not a man put on that which pertains to a woman and let not a woman put on that which belongs to a man for that matter so make sure that you dress up right that your dressing up does give glory to god you need to be more cautious because there are also people that have been saved from prostitution people that have been saved from lust people that have been saved from many weaknesses and if you dress up in that way you are doing nothing but tempting them so you need to make sure that your dressing code is on point point number c point number c is remember to conduct yourself in a manner that gives or brings glory to god and so on conduct is very very important because we are ambassadors of god and our conduct should reflect that of children of the kingdom of god not of the kingdom of darkness first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 to 10 says in like manner also that women should adorn themselves in modest apparels and this is what i was referring to dress up in such a manner that you're gonna bring glory or give glory to god not in such a manner as though you are going to provoke people now again hinting back to the event that i attended these are some of the views that we saw these are some of the things that we observed these are some of the things that happened women and men alike both were dressed up in such a way as though they are going to find husbands or wife or as though they are going to fish for men and women to sleep with for that matter as though they are going there with the purpose of going to seduce somebody and so on the word of god says precisely likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel and it continues saying not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works so it's very important that even if you braid for example you are not braiding to show that you are greater than the rest your dressing code itself you need to mind it your conduct itself the way you are performing the way you are moving your hips especially women make sure that you are not moving in such a provocative manner that it looks sexual that it looks as though you are trying to seduce men that it looks as though you are beyonce that it looks as though you are rihanna that it looks as though you are cardi b no we are not cardi b's we are not rihanna's we are not chris brown's we are not all of those worldly celebrities we are children of of God. What we want is just that voice. What we want is just that praise, that worship basically to be heard, to come out of you. The moves won't matter much, especially if those moves are worldly moves. How do they give glory to God? That's the question that should pop up for that matter. That's the question that you should consider in such a regard. But moving on, last but not least, point number four. Point number four is, it shouldn't be about who performed better than who. No, it shouldn't be about that. It's about intimacy and praises to God. So we are going to close it off in the same way. It's about intimacy and giving praises to God. And you should know that if or when a performance is truly coming from the spirit, because we know that children of God are those who worship him in truth and spirit. If a performance or a presentation is really being done in the spirit, is really being performed from the heart, and it's really connecting with God, 
Those who are spiritual that are watching this performance, that are a part of this event, will be able to feel. You will be able to feel a certain spiritual feeling and you will know that definitely this person that is singing this song is in the spirit. And this also at the past event we observed. Many sang, but also many were not impressive. Why? Because they were singing in the flesh. I think they were approaching this event as though it's just entertainment instead of approaching it as though they are giving praises to God. I think I can count at that event only up to three artists that really gave it their best. That when they climbed on that stage, when they got up on that stage, they began singing. You could basically feel the spirit moving. You could feel the power of the spirit moving. But others that basically say they were going to deliver better than others when it came to delivering, unfortunately, they failed to deliver. But again, the point to consider is that motive for attending the event. Point number two, preparation for the event. Point number three, as you are coming to the event to perform, what's your motive or what are your thoughts before you get on that stage? Is it for self-glory? Is it for the glory of God? Are you coming there really to glorify and praise God, to have intimacy with God? Or are you coming to just show off? Or are you just coming there for the money? Now, these are some of the reasons why many people could not connect with the crowd. They could have connected. They are good singers. They are gifted. But unfortunately, the power of the Holy Ghost could not be felt in these performances. Lucky for me, I have the recordings of that event. I will be able to upload each artist one by one. And you will be able to get a chance to watch it for yourself and you will be able to know who sang in the spirit and supported by the spirit and who didn't for that matter. Now it's very important to consider that those who are spiritual, when the spiritual sing, they also will be able to connect. But those who are in the flesh, even when the spiritual sing, they won't be able to connect. But again, those who are in the flesh sometimes can connect with those who are in the flesh. But one thing we cannot deny is that when God is pleased by the preaching and when God is pleased with praises when God is pleased with worship something must happen different people must testify and say I felt that performance I felt your performance I felt the way you sing I felt in some type of way when you were performing and this is biblical we're gonna go back to the Old Testament to just lay down a good scriptural reference to what I'm saying second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 13 verse 13 says it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one. So unity is very important in this regard. That's why when we come together, we must be in unity. There must not be separation. It's not about I am better than the other person. I'm going to sing better than the other person. Put me first. Put me last. Put me in the center. Let me do the introduction. Let me be the outro. Let me do the announcement. Let me be the one to preach the main message. Let me be the main singer. No, it's not about that. We need to work in unity. We need to consider one another. The Bible says even the least, the ones that are considered that a member that is considered